I'm a prototype engineer and I'm 33 years old. Hi, I'm Conrad Brown. I'm an aerospace engineer and I'm 28 years old. I'm Joe Zakar. I'm 25 and I'm a full-time student and engineer. Hi, my name is Derek Kushel. I'm a user interface designer. I'm 33 years old. Nathan Warnick, I'm a maker, 31. Every day in major U.S. cities and urban centers, thousands of people ride their bikes to work, to socialize, and to go shopping. It's a great way to avoid traffic, parking, and polluting. But there's a problem. There are millions of people who still choose to drive around, creating excessive traffic, using up parking spots, and polluting the environment. How can we help encourage people to leave their car at home and ride a bike instead? What if we can increase a bicycle's range while reducing unnecessary fatigue so you can show up at work or on a date without needing to take a shower? Let's look at an example of a drive cycle of an urban bicyclist. The red line represents the energy expended by the cyclist and the distance the cyclist has traveled. A typical mile in a city has about 17 blocks, and in order to ride safely, the cyclists often have to stop or slow for crosswalks, traffic, pedestrians, and stoplights. If you want to travel any reasonable distance, you're going to break a sweat. Now imagine, what if there were a special type of bicycle that can go the same distance as a regular bicycle while reducing the amount of effort required to complete the journey? Before we get too deep, let's take a step back and talk about energy and the laws that govern it. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. This is what the law of conservation of energy is. It's a law because there's no way to bypass it. You just can't create something from nothing or make something disappear. Not in our universe, at least. There are a couple things we can do that won't break the law of conservation of energy. One of them is that we can transform energy. Another thing we can do with energy that doesn't break the law of conservation of energy is store energy. We wouldn't have enough time to go over all the many different ways we can, but here are a few examples. A compressed spring, pressurized gas, electrochemical, which would be like batteries, refined oils, which would be like fuel, gunpowder, and a rotating mass. Let's take a look at the rotating mass a little bit more closely. Let's pretend we take a round boulder and roll it down a hill. As it rolls down the hill, it builds up more and more kinetic energy. But let's take this boulder and put an axle through it, and then spin the boulder around the axle. And what we've just created is a flywheel. Try this fun experiment at home. Take an egg and spin it. You transfer kinetic energy from your hand to the shell, and the shell transfers this energy to the yolk. But when you stop the egg shell, the yolk continues to spin inside. The yolk then transfers that stored kinetic energy to the shell again and makes it spin. Let's try to do something useful with rotational kinetic energy. We'll use the bike's rear wheel as a flywheel. We've got a DC motor hooked up to an LED. We'll pedal the bike and stop pedaling. And you can see that there's energy stored in that wheel. When we touch the DC motor to the wheel, it lights up the LED. This is proof that there's energy stored in the wheel, and that we're not breaking the law of conservation of energy, because remember, energy cannot be created or destroyed. Now coming back to where we left off, remember this graph and the special bike? 
What if we put a flywheel energy storage unit on a bicycle? We would convert energy from stopping or slowing down into rotational kinetic energy. We would then use this stored rotational kinetic energy to help accelerate the bicycle. Let's try to visualize how this will work. We hooked a bungee cord to the back of a bicycle. When I ride the bicycle forward with the bungee cord anchored in position, the bungee cord stretches out converting the kinetic energy from the motion of the bicycle into potential energy. On our flywheel bicycle, instead of stretching out a bungee cord, we will spin up the flywheel, which will store rotational kinetic energy. Now to show you how this energy can be used to propel the bike, we will switch positions of the bungee cord to the front of the bike. We stretch the bungee cord to roughly the same amount as last time. When I lift the feet off the ground, you can see the potential energy in the bungee cord is converted back to kinetic energy, propelling the bike forward. This is the same principle again we'll use for the flywheel bicycle, where we'll convert the rotational kinetic energy stored in the flywheel into forward motion of the bicycle. Our flywheel bicycle project will be completed in three phases. Phase one is the flywheel energy storage unit development. Phase two is the flywheel energy transmission system. And phase three is integrating this into a bicycle. For our EDS Fund grant project, we will focus on phase one of developing and building the flywheel energy storage unit. We appreciate the opportunity to apply for the EDSFund.org grant, and we are excited about completing the flywheel bicycle project using the Tormach CNC tools. For more information, please refer to the grant proposal submitted by our team. Thank you for watching and thank you for considering our application.